and we're going to cover cross tabs and summations and reports, how you can add those and when you might want to add those. The purpose of cross tabs and summations are just to get a count of information, so a count of cases, a count of time, and so forth, and to have that summarized in a nice, uh, easy way uh, on your report. The summations are a count of one field. The cross tabs are a count of comparison across two different fields. Uh, in a uh, matrix or format, some people think of it. So let's just first look at the front end of the summation and also of a cross tab, and then we'll come back and talk about how you add those to your report and the different options you have when you do that. So first we'll look at an example of a summation. And this is just a case totals by funding code report. And the summation is the little chart or graph, what are you going to call it here at the top. And so you can see what it is doing is for all of the cases in this report, uh, it's just totaling up the count of cases by uh, funding code. Now also on this report is a column breakdown, which you may be familiar with. It's something you can add to uh, many of the columns on your reports. So it's, it's another way to get a count of the values in a particular column. Now one difference between your column breakdowns, like we're seeing on funding code here, and the summation is that column breakdowns will only show you counts of values that exist in the column, and you don't see uh, a count here of you know the blank or the NA values. So here we see you know we have five different funding codes that have counts. So if I come back up to the summation, you can see in the summation that we have an NA row here, and so that's telling me that I have 139 cases or matters in this report that don't have a funding code. And again, I don't see that down in the column breakdown. That's one reason that you may want to, other than just visual reasons, to use a summation instead of a column breakdown. When you're just wanting to get counts of things on a report. I'll open up the age race report, which is an example of a cross tab. So as you can see, the cross tab, again, is just comparing two fields, two columns. Uh, in your report. In this case, it's showing the breakdown by gender and the rows on the left, and then age at intake and the columns across the top. You may notice that the age at intake is grouped together, and those are what are called bends and reports in Legal Server. And when we look at the back end of the age race report, I'll show you how those uh, bends work. So that's what those look like on the front end. And so you can see you know, why you may or may not want to use those on a particular report. So let's talk about on the back end and how you add those to reports and what your options are. So let's first go back to the case totals by funding code report. And instead of running it, I will edit it. So now we're in edit mode on the back end of this report. You can see our summation there. You can also see that we have, in the, towards the top left, we have a summation settings section here. For each of your summation settings sections and cross tab uh, settings uh, sections, you'll have a little black X next to it. That will let you delete the summation or a cross tab off of a report. You will get a prompt, you know, are you really sure that you want to delete the section? I'll go ahead and delete this one, and we'll just rebuild it so you can see the process that you go through. So if you have a report that does not have a summation on it and you want one, you go into the additional display formats section. For those of you who have edited reports and looked at this additional display formats, we're working off of a demo site, which has uh, some recent code updates to it. So this section may look a little bit different to you. Inside the additional display format section is a summations link. 
So you just click that link. That will refresh the page, and that will add a new summation setting section to your report. By default, the Show Summations checkbox will be checked, but you can uncheck that box if you want to leave a summation on a report but temporarily hide it uh, for whatever reason. The few fields that you can fill out on the summation. So the first is a title. That's completely optional. But I'll just do for this one, I'll say case counts by funding code. Then you have a row drop down. This, of course, is the column, the field that you want to display as the rows. You'll notice when I drop that down, it's a very short list. So this is not all of the fields that are available on this top level report. Uh, these are only fields that have been added to the report. So if you have an existing report, you want to do a summation on a column, you have to first add that column to the report. In this case, I'm going to pick funding code. Bins, we'll skip over for now. We'll talk about bins and connection with cross-tab on that age race report. And then I have a sort checkbox if I want to sort the rows. So I'll go ahead and check that. And I'll scroll down so you can see the data table. I close up the additional display format section. And you may notice, if you can see, that I haven't sorted the data table uh, on any columns. Now, I could sort it on matter case ID or one of the other columns, and that would be fine. So then my detail, my data table, would be sorted by that column. But I do not want to you know, sort it by funding code uh, in the data table and up in the summation. Same thing holds true for cross tabs. So those two sorts can sometimes fight each other uh, if you're trying to you know, sort in the same thing in different ways in the two different places. The row subsections, is, uh, as it indicates, is optional. Uh, typically, you're not going to use this. There needs to be, for row subsections to work correctly, there needs to be a specific tie in the database for uh, those to work. The classic example of row subsections uh, is if you have a case service report or something like that that is has rows of legal problem code, and then you want to group those by legal problem code category. And legal problem code category is where you would select you know, what you would select for your subsections. Now, the final column or a setting that you need to uh, choose for your summation is the value, which is what the summation is going to be counting. What this will show you is all of the numeric fields that exist on the report. So in this case, we only have two numeric fields currently, which is database ID and count for totals. Now, the count for totals is sort of a special field. So I want to explain if you don't have that on your report or if you don't have that on your site, how you can deal with that. If you're doing a summation or a cross-tab, like on a time report, then you have typically the time spent field is the one that you're going to be counting. So that's a numeric field that you can go ahead and count. If you're working on a case report, then you need a special column. In this case, on our demo site, we've called this count for totals. This count for totals column, as I say, is a special column in the sense that it is the underlying case ID, and it's just been formatted to display as a count. So essentially what it's doing is just showing a one for each case in the report. And so that lets you get a count of your cases. It's very likely on your site that you already have a case count for totals, count for totals column. It can be called different things on different sites. And it's probably available to you in the add column link on your site. So if you click on add column on your site, you will probably see in your report library, which is the top section of the Ag Column window, something like Count for Totals or Case Count for Totals. You'll notice in the center of the Count for Totals on this site, it shows you the path to the field, which is case data, and then the Count for Totals is the, the heading label, and then the ID field. So that's indicating that 
All this field is is just the underlying case ID. Now, it's not the case number that you're used to seeing, like you know, 13 dash whatever, 14 dash whatever. It's the actual underlying ID that's used in the database. Let's come back over to the report. Now go into the count for totals column properties. And so again, you can see that this is just the uh, little ID, as we sometimes call it, field. And the, the trick to it is that the aggregate setting has been set on this column. And the aggregate has been set to count. And that's what tells it to you know, just put a 1 there. In other words, count every time uh, it sees that ID number. I'll take this off temporarily. So you can see what's happening with that particular column. Let me refresh the report. Now when we come back down to the data table, you can see there's that ID number, that underlying ID number. And you may notice that matches up with the ID number over in the, the matter case ID, which is what you're normally used to dealing with. So again, that setting that aggregate on this field just as Instead of showing the case, the underlying case ID, just display a one. You know, count that number and just display a one there. All right, so that's all we need to do for our summation, except click on the apply button. So if you make changes when you're adding a summation, or if you're making changes to an existing one, always remember you need to click on the apply button to save those changes. And you also will still need to ultimately, once you're done editing your report, before you leave it, you want to click Save Changes at the top. That will save our changes. And now if I run the report again, you can see even though I deleted that summation, the original one, we just rebuilt it so we have the same summation that we saw before. Now let's look at the age race report that had a cross tab on it. So I'll edit that report. And I'll open up the cross tab settings section. And we won't take time to delete and then rebuild this one. So the cross tab settings are very similar to the summation. Uh, the difference is that we have an additional columns option that we need to select here in addition to the rows. Just like with the summation, the show cross tab checkbox is automatically checked. You can uncheck that to, uh, if you wanted to temporarily hide that as opposed to delete it. The title, we just call this one age race report. For the columns, we selected uh, age at intake. and check the box to sort that. And then for the rows, we selected gender. So it would be very simple to change this. For example, if we wanted this to be a gender uh, age report. And I'll do that just so you can see how easy it is to change that. So we happen to have race on here. I could also do it by county of residence or any of these other columns that would make sense. So I'll go ahead and select race. Again, our value is you know, the numeric fields. Now, in this case, we have age at intake also here because that's a numeric field. But we don't want to count age at intake because that, what that would do is just you know, add up all the age at intake so you would get some you know, huge number that's not going to be helpful. So what we're wanting to count here is cases. So again, I'm going to select the case count for totals. This is the same field that uh, we saw in the first report. But the column heading is just different on this report. So your column headings can be different from report to report. And again, if I want to see the changes to my cross tab and save those, I need to click on the Apply button. So I click on the Apply button, come back down to the cross tab. So you can see now, instead of this being a uh, 
or I meant to select gender. This was already an age race report. So I apologize. Let me select gender. Click on the apply button. And so now instead of this being an age race report, this is uh, or an age race uh, cross tab, this is now an age gender cross tab. Obviously if I really wanted to save this, I would change the title of the cross tab up there. So you can see it's fairly easy to change those things. Uh, if I wanted to come up and make this a county of residence age cross tab, I could just select county of residence, click on apply. Come back down, then I would get my breakdown with county of residence as the rows. And I could reverse those, so I could have age and intake be the rows, and gender, race, county of residence, whatever uh, the other field I want to summarize uh, as the columns. I'm going to flip this back to race. And then we want to talk about the bends that I mentioned before. We saw that. So you can do bends on summations and cross tabs. What bends allow you to do is to group numeric field values uh, into what we call bends. So the age and intake field here, you know, if we come down into uh, the data table, uh, so even on this demo site, you know, we're going to have quite a few different age and intakes. In a real database, you would probably have you know, values for most of the ages. And so your age and intake columns up here, if they weren't bent or grouped together, there would be a column for you know, each one of those ages. So you would see a column for 18, 19, 20, 21, and so forth. And obviously your cross tab would be uh, extremely wide. So that might be useful in some cases, but for most reports, you probably want to group people into certain ages. That's what the bends are about. So the bends are simply uh, comma-separated groups of uh, comma-separated number ranges. So in this case, the the bends that have been set up for this cross tab are 0 to 17. So 0 dash 17, comma 18 dash 59, comma. And then we have a label and then a numeric range. So the label here, which you can put on any one of your bends, is just text followed by a colon and then your numeric range. So I could put a label in front of each one of these. So I could put kids colon, then 0 to 17, adults colon, 18 to 59, and then leave the 60 plus colon and then the 60 to 120 the final bend there. So I'll click apply so you can see what that would look like. So we come back down to our cross tab. You can see the should be able to see the columns there. In this case, you know, this is probably not going to sort the way that I want it to, so that's why I would set up as 0 to 17 as opposed to kids and also just 18 to 59 without the adults label because when you sort that you're going to get you know, the numbers are going to come in first, and then you're going to get the labels like adults and then like kids. There's no way to manually control that. So the, the sort is just going to go numeric and then uh, by label. So I'm going to come back and delete the two labels for 0 to 17 and 18 to 59. And also, you know, I don't need a label for this 60 to 120 option for a bend here. But I'll leave that there. The other thing with bends is that you can't have an open-ended number range. So uh, you might be tempted to, for 60 plus, 60 and over uh, bend, to do to 60 dash. Uh, that won't work. You have to have a beginning and an ending number and the range. So in this case, we did 60-120. Now you could do just like 60-999. Uh, I think the 999 is the highest number that you can put in a bend like that. Uh, what typically this is set up is 60-120. Other people will use 60-100 or 60-150 you know, or something like that. 
And the reason that you may want to put a lower number on that is so that if you have some bad data, so if you have somebody in your database whose age and intake is 300, you don't want them to, uh, or you may not want them to be you know, counted in the 60 and over range. You may want them to jump out uh, of you know, the data. So if I scroll that back down to the cross tab, you can see we have, for age and intake, we have an NA column. So just like we saw with summation is if you have uh, records that don't have the value that you're doing the summation across tab on, it'll show you an NA column or an NA row. Then you can also see that we have a minus 9 column here. So we have somebody who's being, you know, we have one case it looks like that has an age intake of minus 9. And if, again, if we wanted, if we had a case in our database that had, you know, an age intake of 300 or 400 or something like that, you probably want that to be kicked out into its own column so that you can see that and you can track that case down and correct that information. So that's why you would typically go with like a 60-120 if you're doing a 60 and over. So you can have as many bins as you want. So I've seen reports where it's you know, 0 to 5 and then the next one is 6 to you know, 12, 13 to 19, 20 to whatever. Uh, so you could have uh, seven, eight, nine, ten bins here for age and intakes, or you know, any of your other numeric columns you can add bins for. All right, so let me just click apply and get my uh, bins that I wanted back. Now, just a couple of other notes about uh, summations and cross tabs. I haven't shown it here in this session, but you can have multiple uh, summations and cross tabs on a report. Uh, as far as I know, there's no limit. I've never seen anybody run into a limit. Uh, I think I've seen you know, up to like 12 or 13 cross tabs and summations on a report. And you can mix and match them, so you can have you know, a summation and a cross tab. You can have multiple summations, multiple cross tabs on a report. There is currently no way to reorder. If you do have multiple summations and or cross tabs, there's no way to manually order those. So the way that your summations and cross tabs are going to appear on the report, when somebody runs it, is going to be in the order that you added them. So if you have a report that it's important to have, you know, a summation by age first, and then a summation by uh, gender second, and then a summation by county or something else third, and so forth. You want to make sure you add those to your report in that order. If you, because if you needed to reorder those for some reason, then you would have to you know, delete and re-add uh, as necessary to get those to come out in the order that you wanted them to. Also, if you get into reordering summations and cross tabs, you'll see that sometimes when you're working in edit mode and you're saving changes, they, the order that they'll come out uh, in edit mode won't necessarily always match up with uh, what people will see in run mode. Now, it generally will once you go ahead and save your changes, but sometimes it won't. I just want to let you know that. Uh, so if you are working for a specific order, you know, get the order that you think is correct, save your changes, and then just flip to a different tab or a different browser window and once you save changes, run your report and see what it's going to be doing you know, uh, on the front end. One other note is that uh, you generally don't want to section your data table when you're using cross tabs or summations. If you're not familiar with sectioning, I'll just go ahead and show you what that would look like. And I'll, for example, I'll section this report on gender. To apply a section to a report, which is just a way to group information on a report, you open the column properties and go into the show attribute. And in addition to yes and hide, you have a section option. So you can select that and apply your changes. I have automatic refresh off, so I'll need to refresh the data table. So if I come back down into the data table, you can see what the sectioning will do. It will, just, it will pull that column all the way to the left. It will automatically sort on that column. And then instead of repeating 
you know, female all the way down. It'll just show it once. Then it'll show all the uh, female records. And then if I went farther into this report, you know, eventually it would get down to male and then show all the male records and so forth. As you can see up here, this did not, uh, you know, interfere with the cross tab. Uh, and so sometimes it can work with sectioning. But always just caution people, or if you try to section and you, you know, that messes up your cross tab or summation, that's the reason. So the reports are generally more flexible about being able to do sectioning and cross tab summation on the same report. And the final thing I'll mention, and just in terms of notes about uh, building your summations and cross tabs, is that you generally don't want to use date fields and cross tabs and summations just because for your typical report, uh, for the amount of data you're going to get, you would end up with hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, columns or rows, depending on where you selected the date field for. So if you selected something like you know date opened or date closed for your rows or columns, or just the rows in a summation, and you, know, you had 13,000 cases, then you're going to get uh, it's, you know covering one year, you're going to get a row for every date in that year that has a closed case. So it could be 365 rows, 365 columns. So it's not that you can't do it. It's just typically not that uh, useful. And it's not exactly you know, summarizing your data for you. And you can't do bends on uh, date fields like you can on number fields. Now, if you do want to group uh, information by dates like that, I think we have a uh, date closed on this report. And it's currently a hidden column, so let me display the date closed field. And let me get the sectioning off of the gender field so that's not cluttering things up. All right, so coming back down to the data table, we have our date close column here. And again, if this was a real data set, you know, uh, if this was uh, over a month, then I'm going to get you know up to 30 or 31 you know, rows or columns and so forth, up to a year, up to 365. What may be useful to me to do, though, uh, on a column like date close, date open, whatever it happens to be, is to format that column. So open up the column properties. And you have options like year only, uh, also year and month only. So I'll select year and month only. And I'll apply those changes. I'll let that refresh. And now you can see instead of you know, the full date, it's just showing the year and the month. So I'll come back up to my cross tab, and I'll see if we can get this to work. And I'll just say the rows, I'm going to use date close for the rows. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, that is not formatting the way I expected it to. Actually, let me save changes here. All right, so I should have saved changes after I changed the format of the date close column. So if we look now at the date close, I changed the year. And if we look at the cross tab, you can see instead of seeing all those individual dates, it's going to be show up you know, per year. And let's change this one more time. Let's just try the year and month again. I'll apply those changes and let's save changes on the report. All 
And it's interesting. It looks like the year and month is not working as I expected it to. But the year was. So I'm not sure what the issue is there. I know I've used year and month and other reports. But if you run into a report where you really need to use year and month on a day like that, date open, date close, uh, feel free to contact us and we can address that. Change this back to race. And then save my changes again. The final thing that I want to mention, in addition to any questions that uh, may be posted, is the help information that's available uh, regarding reports. So I just opened up another tab on our demo site. You can do the same thing on your site. And I just used the Go to Community link to automatically log myself into uh, our community site. You get the same information directly on your help page. You may find it a little formatted a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to see and read over on the community site. And on the home page of the community site, I've scrolled down into the administration tools section. I have four links related to reports, one of those being the report manual. And on the report manuals page, you can see there is a section on editing reports about additional display formats. I just want to show you for reference, you have information over here about cross tabs and summation, so the things that we've talked about. So if you need that for uh, going back later for other reference, then you can find that information in here, including the way to build that count for totals uh, field if you need that, if it's not already on your 